Well, obviously an emotional game, uh, a game I'm, I'm really proud of our kids, uh, our guys. They battled uh, tooth and nail. You know, we, uh, we got down eight points with about four and a half minutes to go. And, uh, you know, I, I just told them to not try to get all back in one or two possessions. But, you know, it's gotten to the point where uh, they, they already know that. You know, they, they just sort of echo, Coach, we got it. You know, we understand. And that, that hasn't always been the case. And for us to be able to go out and put together consecutive stops and, and come down and execute um, says a lot about how much our team's grown. You know, we, um, I personally have so much uh, love for Sean and his staff. And I know it's, it's heartbreaking for them because they had a special year, um, a special season. And I know it's, it's tough. But, um, you know, I'm, today's a Xavier day. And, and uh, I'm proud of these guys here at the uh, dais. OK, hands for questions. We'll go on the front first. Just do your name and affiliation yeah. first time. Pat Brennan with the Cincinnati Enquirer. Congrats, Chris, guys. Thanks, um, I know I haven't been on the beat the longest, Chris, but that was the most animated I've ever seen you on the sideline. Can you, are you able to verbalize uh, what this means to you and the program and what it, how you feel for these guys? Well, I just think that any team that can get you know, through the uh, eye of the needle to get to an Elite Eight. Um, you're, you're playing unbelievable teams. And, you know, I told these guys that uh, after our first week in Orlando, which I thought we played uh, selfless basketball, I thought we competed and played hard, uh, there were a lot of people talking about how we had a favorable draw. And I think that bothered our guys. You know, it was almost like we, we beat the second-place Big Ten team um, pretty convincingly in the second half. You know, we, uh, we throttled Florida State a three seed, and, and all of a sudden it was about how Florida State wasn't um, the team that everybody talked about. And uh, I think our guys earned a, a lot today, but they had already earned that in, in my book, the way we battled back in the six-game losing streak a long time ago. So, yeah, it was emotional, and uh, really happy that our guys played to win every possession tonight. Okay, we go on the left, second row. I know you, congratulations on the victory, and I know it's, you just won the game, but your thoughts on facing Gonzaga on Saturday? I have no thoughts about Gonzaga at this point. And I'm not being flip. I, I know Karnuski. If I mispronounced his name, I apologize. I, I know they have Nigel Goss. I know Mark Few has done an incredible job. I, I don't know a lot of their players. Jonathan Williams, we tried to get on a transfer, and he didn't give us much. Um, I put all our efforts into focusing on Arizona. Go ahead. Chris, uh, Chris, can you take us through that last play? Was that something you drew up with the intention of getting it to Sean with Ristic off the court? Or? Yeah, well, when we came to the timeout, it was 50 seconds left in the game. And um, I, I'd, I'd called a play, uh, I think, two series, right? Two pairs. Yeah. And, and we felt like it was too long developing. And by the time the shot would have gone up, whether we had made it or not, Arizona would have had the ball with less than a shot clock's worth of possession. So I, I opted to go with a little bit of a quicker play. And that one had worked for us earlier in the game. We felt like uh, you know they didn't press us, so Q was able to get the ball near half court because we wanted to go two for one down the stretch. And just fortunately, Sean was able to catch a great ba pass by Trey and put it in through all that traffic and um, you know gave guys a boost of confidence. Then we had to defend. All right, go up front again. Uh, can you talk about uh, solving Ristic and marketing? Because they gave you guys fits early on there. How tough was that, and how big was Sean and, and Rashid? Yeah, it's just a challenge when, um, you know, we, we wanted to keep the ball in front of us. They have uh, elite athleticism, an ability to get to the rim, whether we play man or zone. And I said at halftime that, um, you know, I didn't want to come into the locker room and just, you know, blast our guys for not blocking out because that wasn't the case. The problem was we weren't containing the ball and dribble penetration in the zone. And so when the shot went up, our bigs were helping in no position to block out. And I said, we, we, if we can figure out a way, whether we're man or zone, to keep the ball in front of us, at least it'll give us an opportunity to rebound the ball. And we weren't perfect in the second half, but we were in the last three, four minutes um, of, regular, of the game. And that's uh, the reason that, you know, we were able to win. I told them the first shots won't beat us. Second shots will, and we didn't give up any second shots down the stretch. Okay, we'll go over on the left. Jay Alter with the Big East Digital Network. Trayvon, JP, you lost to this Arizona team in the same spot when you were a freshman. What does it mean to you to come back in your junior year and advance to the Elite Eight? Um, it feels good, you know. Uh, just, for one, just to be able to 
you know, kind of get that, you know, revenge that we've been looking for. And, and two, just to make it to Elite Eight. I mean, um, it's been a while since, you know, the program has done it. And just to get back there is just it's a real feeling. You know, I would say I'm, um, I'm extremely happy on how we played together today. Um, and uh, I'm very proud of everyone on our team. Um, we got a lot of tough guys and we played together. And I'm happy that we're advancing. <clears throat> say on the left. Sandeep Chandok with the Spartan Daily. Uh, question for JP. JP, you, uh, you played a great game. You, you kept your composure. How are you able to do that, especially when you guys get down? And then how do you keep your composure to bring this team back in it? You know, just staying level-headed. Um, my teammates have extreme confidence in me. Um, I get riled up a little bit. I get a little bit into the game a little bit. Little and bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And um, I just got to stay poised and, and just know that my teammates have my back at all times. Back in the front. Malcolm, you uh, shot very efficiently tonight. Uh, how much was the idea of this run ending going through your mind throughout the game? And uh, how do you feel right now? Uh, <laughs> I feel incredible. Um, happy. I'm very excited. Um, and I just really didn't want our season to end. Uh, we worked so hard, uh, not only in the off season, but throughout the year battling adversity. and. Uh, I just didn't think it was time for our season to end. Go on the fourth row down. Thank you. Uh, for the three of you, I'm Sarah Cazell with the W.TV. I know Coach said he's got no thoughts on Gonzaga, but I'm wondering if any of the three of you saw them at any point during the regular season and, and what you think about them. Uh, no, I didn't get to catch them during the regular season. So, you know, my answer is the same as coaches. You know, really no thoughts. We were just preparing for the next team, and I was Arizona. I don't know much about them. I just know they got a big guy. That's, it. That's about it. That's all I really know. Same here. Yeah, I don't know much about them except Nigel Goss. And that, that, Nigel. That's not disrespectful. I mean, they play their games. It's, you know, our guys are tucked in bed and, you know, by 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And <laughs> so they, they, they don't necessarily watch, the, you know, the West Coast. And I'm sure Gonzaga hasn't seen Xavier play much either. So um, coaching staffs are very well prepared, uh, I'm sure, for both programs. Um, you know, we've done advanced scouting with a couple of assistants. Uh, so those guys will, will tutor our team and, uh, and myself here over the next 24 hours. On the, yep, on the left there against the curtain. You know, Ryan Leong with the Associated Press Radio Network. And you kind of mentioned this already, but it, when you look at the kind of matchup where you don't see very often between your team and Gonzaga, is that kind of what makes March Madness special? Um, I, it makes it special for me. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure. You know, fans are going to choose their favorite teams, but um, I don't know what you're insinuating, you know, because we're small Jesuit schools or anything like that. But, um, you know, we're, we're, about, we're about good basketball, and, and uh, you know, we got competitive guys. Our, both programs have a storied tradition and um, started well before me and started before Coach Few uh, with Coach Monson. And so it's going to be a great game, and uh, we look forward to playing it. Gonzaga's had our number the couple times we've played them, so we've got to figure out a way to – do better. Go well, back by the speaker on the left. Coach and fellas, can you guys talk about regrouping after the loss of Sumner and, and how long it took you to do that? And what have you been able to, you know, how did you overcome that? Go ahead, fellas. <clears throat> uh, well, I mean, losing Ed was tough just because he was a, a key part to our team. And uh, just whenever you have a guy that's playing, you know, majority minutes at the point guard position, it's going to be tough to kind of. Uh, you know, really get back into rhythm. But I think um, Ed going down, uh, I think Quentin stepped up, uh, you know, pretty big for being a freshman. Sure. Um, you know, it just, I, I feel like it was, the click was always there. Uh, we just had to learn how to play for a full 40 minutes. So uh, I would say that's really all it was. You know, obviously Ed went down and then Trey had an ankle injury shortly after that. And honestly, the main thing is we stuck together. Um, we, we are, we're all tough guys. We stuck together, and we've been playing, playing tough together. And um, we're not really backing down from anybody. And if you have that mentality, um, you, you, got, you, you can beat a lot of teams. Uh, I feel the same way as, as these guys, so they, they, they said all the words. You can do a couple quick ones. Anybody left? Okay, right there on the left. Ben Schneider with NBC News Radio. Uh, Coach or Malcolm, uh, you guys want to touch on? I saw David West in the crowd. I know he's very proud to be an alumni. 
He's had a great career. Uh, just talk about kind of his, if he talked to you guys, he gave you a message, and kind of what leadership he can give you guys. Dave, Dave's as big of a Xavier uh, fan as, as our program has. You know, he's arguably the greatest player that's ever wore a Xavier uniform. He's had a special career in the NBA. Um, equally as important, um, Dave's an awesome person. He's a great man. And uh, like I said before, he loves Xavier. So when he found out that you know, we were going to be out here and it was an off day, he's got to shoot around tomorrow morning at 8.30. Um, but he's planning on coming back on Saturday. And, and so it just says a lot about uh, not only Dave, but you know, we have a lot of former players that support our program uh, immensely. Guys come back in the summer, uh, play with these guys, work out with them, talk to them, uh, tell them about their experience. And Dave's no different. I think he went around the locker room uh, for a few minutes here after uh, our game tonight, just being a proud alum. If that's it, I think we'll call it here. Thanks, Thanks guys.